in Massachusetts believe there's been another tragic, deadly case of cyberbullying. A 15-year-old girl committed suicide, and it appears that she was being bullied online. CBS News correspondent Whit Johnson is in South Hadley, Massachusetts, with the story. Good morning, Whit. Maggie, good morning. 15-year-old Phoebe Prince moved here from Ireland. She began attending South Hadley High School last fall. She was trying to adjust to a new life in a new town, a new country, when she fell victim to a growing trend. Phoebe Prince appeared to be well-adjusted and happy, but underneath, friends say the 15-year-old freshman was tormented, a victim of cyberbullying. She was being bullied because she was pretty and people were just jealous. Phoebe's classmate, who does not want to be identified, says he was one of her closest friends, but she never revealed her pain. They called her an Irish slut and a whore. According to a letter from Phoebe's high school principal, what began as mean-spirited comments at school soon found their way online, something experts say can be far more dangerous. Cyberbullying can be so dangerous because it leads to cyber mobbing, where kids can get together and attack another child 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Phoebe was found dead in her South Hadley home days before a big school dance. The night after she died, fellow students held a candlelight vigil. This isn't the first time cyberbullying ended in death. In 2006, 13-year-old Megan Meyer killed herself after being harassed on MySpace by a neighbor's mother posing as a teenage boy. The anonymity of the internet, experts say, means that parents should be even more vigilant. And as a parent, the concern has to be that we're monitoring and supervising, and we're really knowing what they're doing in the virtual world. It just makes me sad how it takes the life of a young teenager who had everything going for her to, uh, to bring the community to realize how bad bullying is. School officials say the incident is under investigation and some students have already been disciplined. Meanwhile, Phoebe's family has flown her body back to Ireland to be laid to rest. Maggie? Whit Johnson in South Hadley, Massachusetts. Thank you, Whit. It's sad knowing that this tragedy could have been prevented. And the dangers of cyberbullying. Imagine coming to a new country. New school new people just to be tormented I mean imagine having somebody in a car throw a drink at you and call you derogatory names on a daily basis you know we treat each other so evilly and it is very easy to sit behind a phone or a computer and torment somebody like it's nothing it's just a screen name and the mob mentality that goes on it's sad that a 15-year-old took her life. It's sad that this still happens today. You know, such a beautiful girl. Tormented to the point that she wanted to end her own life. And why? Because we don't know how to treat each other. Jealousy, hatred, they're all evil, bad things. And this poor girl was tormented because of it. Because she was new. The novelty of her accent wore off. And because other people got jealous. They tormented her. Causing her to take her own life. And it's sad. This is the home where Phoebe Prince lived and died. On January 14th, her younger sister found her hanging in her stairwell. Now, District Attorney Elizabeth Scheibel has revealed new information about what may have pushed Phoebe over the edge. It appears that Phoebe's death on January 14th followed a torturous day for her, in which she was subjected to verbal harassment, 
and threatened physical abuse. According to the district attorney, the day Phoebe committed suicide, she was bullied relentlessly. It started in the library when she was studying, continued into the halls, and then a bottle was thrown at her on her way home. Now, six teens have been indicted by a grand jury on a variety of charges, including violations of civil rights, criminal harassment, and stalking. The two males are being charged with statutory rape. That means they'll face a court and could receive jail time if convicted. That's about right. I mean, the girl killed herself, so it's one thing, like, when you just harass somebody and they're all right with it, but then it's another thing when the girl actually kills herself and it takes it to, like, that level. Bringing the legal system in, you know, may put, add a little more weight to the, uh, behind this whole uh, idea of trying to eliminate school building, bullying. None of the faculty or administrators are facing any criminal charges, but the district attorney did say the harassment of Phoebe Prince was common knowledge among the students and staff. She said more needs to be done to educate people about... We are back now at 8.09 with new details in the bullying suicide case of Phoebe Prince. She's the 15-year-old who took her own life back in January, allegedly after being tormented by a group of classmates. Today, National Correspondent Amy Robach is in South Hadley, Massachusetts with the latest. Amy, good morning to you. Good morning to you, Meredith. Phoebe Prince moved here to South Hadley from her quaint Irish village last fall to get a fresh new start. But newly obtained court documents show that Phoebe Prince was deeply troubled before she ever set foot in South Hadley High School. It was a story that made headlines around the country, a warning about cruelty and the dangers of bullying. Phoebe Prince, 15 years old, beautiful and smart, committed suicide after months of relentless torment by her high school classmates. A car with a couple of kids in it chucks a drink out the window, calls her an Irish slut, an Irish whore. Why don't you go kill yourself? Uh, and she did. At fault, allegedly the so-called mean girls. Four girls who reportedly saw Phoebe as a romantic rival, along with two popular boys she dated. In the days leading up to Phoebe's death, prosecutors say the mean girls bullied her so often, Phoebe hanged herself at home to escape the torture. From information known to investigators thus far, it appears that Phoebe's death on January 14th followed a torturous day for her, in which she was subjected to verbal harassment and threatened physical abuse. All six accused bullies have been criminally charged with felonies and could face years in prison. But court documents recently obtained by Emily Basilton of the online magazine Slate contain police interviews with Phoebe's mother, classmates, teachers, and administrators that tell a different story, one that suggests the team's troubles extended beyond the halls of South Hadley High. For me, the most surprising thing involved her mental health history because that really hadn't been disclosed. The documents reveal that in November of last year, Phoebe attempted suicide, swallowing an entire bottle of the antipsychotic drug Seroquel and going into organ failure. Also detailed in the documents, the fact that Phoebe had taken Prozac and had a history of cutting herself. An interview with a classmate shows the extent of Phoebe's self-mutilation, describing how she, quote, lifted up her hoodie and showed cuts on her chest above her bra and all the way down to her hips. It changes how, how we might think about what happened to her in South Hadley as a result of the bullying and how much the kids who bullied her could, can really be held responsible for her suicide. But there's no question that in her final hours, the bullying was taking its toll on Phoebe. A text message sent on the day of her death threatening suicide, quote, I can't do it anymore. I'm literally home crying. What more do they want from me? Do I have to expletive OD? Also left behind a note asking for forgiveness. The six teenagers who have been indicted in this case are facing charges ranging from civil rights violations to statutory rape. The pretrial hearings are set to get underway in this case this September. Meredith? Mary and Amy Robach, thank you very much. Emily Bazelon, who you just saw in that piece, is with us exclusively. Again, she is the senior editor for the online magazine Slate. Emily, good morning to you. Good morning. You know, in the media, the cause of Phoebe's suicide has been linked basically to a pack of jealous, predatory kids who acted en masse because Phoebe was new to the school and very popular with boys. The DA described it as a nearly three-month campaign 
of relentless and torturous bullying. But after reviewing the grand jury report, you found something quite different, didn't you? Right. I was looking at police interviews, and I've also done a lot of interviews with students. And, you know, there were a couple of conflicts that Phoebe had with different kids. She got involved with um, a boy named Sean, and that made his girlfriend upset. And then she got involved with another boy named Austin, and that made his girlfriend upset. From the point of view of the kids in the school, this was sort of normal girl drama um, until really right before she died, the last day of her death, when the bullying really became serious. So none of the kids that you talked to or school administrators felt that she was unfairly targeted by kids? They felt there was a reason for it? Or? Well, that she was involved in these conflicts, that it's more complicated than the idea of a predatory pack of kids descending on her, and that there are different levels of culpability of the kids. There were really only three kids involved in bullying on her, or bullying her on the day that she died. The other three kids, no one says, you know, were anywhere near her the week before her death. And yet they all have been charged. And yet they've all been charged, and they're facing serious felony charges that would threaten them with prison. So are you saying essentially that from your research you do not believe the facts justify that kind of criminal retribution? It's really hard for me to see how that's the right solution in this case, um, which isn't to say that ter terrible bullying didn't happen here or that this death isn't tragic. Just the notion of criminally charging six teenagers in a way that blames them for the death of a girl who had this much more complicated history, that seems really questionable. Yeah, I hear the DA's office in, in pushing for those charges said one of the reasons it did so is because the school had dropped the ball in terms of dealing with bullying. Did the school do enough? I mean, they knew that Phoebe had a past history of uh, uh, some serious problems. Her mom alerted the school to that. They knew that she had tried to commit suicide right after Thanksgiving. Right. So there was a counselor and a nurse who were regularly in contact with Phoebe and her mother between her suicide attempt in November and her death. And the question is whether the school should have been doing more than that, whether there should have been a broader effort. Um, and I don't feel like I know the answer to that. It's a really hard question. Certainly, I think that after Phoebe's death, the school bungled the public relations aspect of this case. They were bound by confidentiality laws not to explain, not to say what discipline they were imposing, but they didn't do a very good job of making that message come across clearly, and the community really, parts of it, lost confidence in that. Do you think part of this was just an impulse on the part of a lot of people to just place the blame somewhere? Yes, I think there. this is a really sad, awful thing, and I think we do have this strong impulse to want to point fingers and have a clear explanation, a very clear black and white narrative for what happened in this case, and it's just more complicated than that. And right now, with the, they're heading into pre-trial pre situation in the fall, are, are people in town, I'm just curious about the mood of the town, is it more about Phoebe and, and or is it about these kids and maybe some injustice? I think it's more about Phoebe and one reason for that is that when you have criminal charges in a case like this, you really shut down honest conversation. Lawyers get involved, it becomes very difficult to apologize, hard for people to take any responsibility and so the town I think really has not had an honest conversation about these charges you know, what these particular kids did versus some sort of broader failure of the adults in the community or maybe, you know, a broader problem we have with bullying nationally. Well, maybe they will take the time to address it. Emily Bethlehem, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Good evening and welcome to 22 News at 6. I'm Barry Krieger. And I'm Alicia Rodriguez. Several new developments tonight. Three more teens accused of bullying Phoebe Prince had their day in court. And the district attorney dropped a statute. Good evening and welcome. Rodriguez, several new developments tonight. Three more teens accused of bullying Phoebe Prince had their day in court. And the district attorney dropped statutory rape charges against a sixth defendant late this afternoon. 22 News reporter Jackie Bruno was there and joins us live from the Franklin Hampshire Juvenile Court to explain what happened. Well, all three of these girls got plea deals. They admitted to lesser crimes so they could get probation and community service. It's been nearly a year and a half since Phoebe Prince committed suicide after being bullied at South Hadley High School. Now, her aggressors had to own up to their actions. First, Sharon Channon Velasquez had her hearing. She admitted to harassing Phoebe and wept as Phoebe's mother addressed the court. Sharon Velasquez went into Latin class to scream at Phoebe. This, soon after Sharon Velasquez had verbally attacked Phoebe, Sharon Velasquez went into Latin class. She terrified my daughter with her anger. 
judge gave Velasquez probation until her 18th birthday, which is coming up on July 8th of this year. She also has to do 50 hours of community service with at-risk kids. Next, Flannery Mullins, Velasquez's friend, took her seat in court. She was also given probation for bad-mouthing Phoebe in gym class. Word quickly spread around the school that Mullins was angry at Prince and that Mullins planned on fighting her. According to Phoebe's mom, that made Phoebe afraid to go to school, even though she loved learning. Mullins also received 100 hours of community service. Finally, Ashley Lange had her hearing. She sobbed as her actions were read aloud to the court. Lange seemed to be taunting Phoebe. And as the library period was ending, Lange walked by Phoebe's table and referred to her with a derogatory slur. When it was time for Phoebe's mom to speak, she spoke kindly, saying she recently met with Lange. I am very satisfied that the accountability and genuine remorse we have been asking for since the 14th of January 2010 has been offered to me by Ashley Lange. She said she was the only one out of the six teens who were charged to formally apologize to her. She said Phoebe would have accepted the apology as well. She just wished it came sooner. And of course, this was a very difficult day for the Prince family. First officials in Massachusetts. I remember when this story happened and it was all over the news and it was, it broke my heart to see this happen to this beautiful young lady. You know, bullying has always been a big issue and now more than ever, it's gotten out of control to say that bullying is okay is wrong bullying is not a rite of passage never has been never will be and those who say oh well it's a rite of passage girls will be girls boys will be boys it's an excuse because now bullying has become more far reaching than than ever The fact that there is no escape from it. The fact that it's all over social media. The fact that somebody can now sit behind a computer and bully somebody makes it even worse. And if this has taught us anything, that words do hurt. Your Your mouth is the gun, your words are the bullets. And it's uh, totally unnecessary. This death could have been prevented. Now, to me, honestly, do I think the school could have done more? Yes, because there was more than one suicide at that school. I think schools do need to stamp out bullying. Because it is horrible. And there's not an excuse for it. And the fact that, stop, before you say something that's hurtful, stop and think how, if that was said to you, how would that make you feel? And if you're a bully, you're not cool. It doesn't make you cute. Yeah, people might be on board with you. But can you live with the fact that you might have taken somebody's life if they go home and kill somebody, kill themselves? Can you live with that? I know I couldn't. If I said something so hateful to somebody and they went home and they took their life, I'd have to live with that. And I don't think I could. This girl didn't deserve it, period. No amount of bullying. And it's, oh, well, it's just girls being girls, boys being boys. No, that's not an excuse and it's not... Okay. This could have been prevented. And this is where the school should have stepped in and ended all this. And I do hold the teachers because the teachers knew what was going on. And they did nothing about it. They let this escalate. And it escalated to the point that this girl went home and hung herself. And her little sister found her. Now imagine being that little sister coming home and finding her older sister hanging there. What kind of traumatic experience that is to her. And how 
this is evil. And I do believe that, yes, you should be charged if somebody takes their life because you're bullying. There needs to be a stiffer penalty because you are culpable, because you led that person to want to end their suffering. I deal with bullying on a daily basis. I play Xbox. And Xbox has such a toxic community, it's not funny. Because people want to go on there and they want to be bullies and they think that it's cute and it makes them a big person. When in all reality, it's not funny. Because you don't know what somebody's going through. You never know what somebody is going through in their life. You would think that with Phoebe, this would have been a lesson learned. But bullying still goes on today. And eventually we would learn on down the line when a man of Tao would eventually take her life due to, bu- due to bullying. Megan Myers and plenty others that eventually would take their lives due to bullying. This needs to stop. And Phoebe, Phoebe's story was tragic and sad and heartbreaking. And it, it's just tremendously bad. This needs to end bullying needs to end we need to stop the bullying because it's heartbreaking having somebody tell you to kill yourself having people call you all kinds of derogatory names having people throw drinks at you because of jealousy It's sad. And it's not, oh, that's just teens being teens. No. It's not a girl thing. It's not a boy thing. Bullying is bullying. It's not, there's no excuse. It's just hate. And it's pathetic. And it's sad. And if you are a bully, you are pathetic. You are not cool. You are sad. And maybe you need to take a look in the mirror. Because throwing hate about, uh, upon somebody doesn't make you a better person. It just shows how pathetic you are. And it's sad. Really sad. Once shone brightly in Phoebe Prince was alive once again tonight on the South Hadley Town Common. We stand tonight again in darkness to remember a dark time, but we do so this time with the flicker of candlelight, a reminder that a light always shines in the darkness. Hundreds gathered to remember the life and now legacy of a girl who took her own life one year ago after she was relentlessly bullied. You know, we can't, you know, forget that it happened and we need to take time as a community to gather and and it's all about community. Friends and even people who never knew Phoebe held a candle high in her honor. I'm here to support my fellow classmates in my school, in my town, because it really means a lot and I didn't know her, but she made a difference in my life. Phoebe was a great person. She was loving, caring, she's that smile every day, just brings us all together here tonight. For the community of South Hadley, it was a chance to get beyond its troubles. Reflect the journey that we've all been through in the past year and to hopefully hear with a sense of hope and, and how we can make a difference in the future. Everything she's done for us and how great of a person she was and how a tragedy can sort of bring a town together the way it does. And although she may be gone for many, Phoebe is still very much alive in their hearts and in their minds, still burning brightly. Phoebe, oh!